Hello everyone, and welcome to another Let's Playthrough with me, your host Tim. And today, over the next several days, we will be playing through Clive Barker's Undying. Recently I've been in the mood to play a game which is more action-y, as it were, like a first-person shooter, similar to Serious Sam, but not quite as... what's what I'm looking for? As... mindless is not the appropriate term, since picking the right weapon to deal with the right creature was a big part of that game. But I didn't want something that was that action pace. I wanted something a little slower, but something faster than Thief. And I thought, hey, you know what? This game probably fits that bill, so we'll play it together. Now, some more prep about the game. I I was playing this game last week and recording it, and the recordings came out way too dark. Then I realized, unfortunately, after I deleted a good deal of that video, that it wasn't the recordings that had been coming out too dark for me, it's been my video media players which have been too dark. So I was using my NVIDIA settings. I'm sorry, I was not using my NVIDIA settings. Instead of relying on the media player to choose the best way to play back the video. And all of it looked way too dark. After fiddling around with my NVIDIA settings, it now looks exactly as I see it in the game. So. With that note, I've made a bunch of mistakes, and the first, up until the first boss, I did just last week. That said, I did it in one, in one go through. I'm probably still going to be freaked out by everything, and I know I missed a few secrets, so I'm going to be a little more observant. Ex observant? Observant! As I play through. Wow, what's wrong with me? As we play through this together. This game is supposed to be like the. Bioshock games, by the way. Or rather, Bioshock strikes me as being very similar to this. Never understood why Bioshock's... It's... The people said it was the spiritual successor to System Shock 2. It was more like the spiritual successor to this game. So, anyway, uh, what the game is like is we're going to be have different weapons we're going to find, and we can, of course, we have can carry all of them. We'll be picking up different spells that we can use as well, and basically it's gun in left hand, spells in right hand. There's going to be lore in the game. We'll be picking up, basically journal entries for the most part. I will read all of them. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love doing that stuff. I love the lore and so on. Plus it gives a little bit of background as to why we're doing things and what we're fighting and, and so on. Finally, I'll read all the item descriptions. I will walk where appropriate, but you will probably see me running, honestly, through most of this game. Walking is a little too slow for me, so other than some sneaking sections, I'll be running everywhere. And I think, I think we're good to go. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I, c I should cover. Other than, I think I, I think I mentioned already that I never I never beat this game. I did play it a long, long, long time ago as well, and got almost to the end. But I don't have a good memory of anything past the first boss. So without further ado, I think we're finally ready to go. Let's go ahead and pick a new game. Oh, this game might be a little creepy at certain points as well. It's going to have some... Ooh, wow, that's kind of eerie. As well as, oh god, this is this area's going to be bad. As well as, oh god, something's leaping out at us in the dark. It has a lot of those, especially. So, let's go ahead and start our game. Oh, and we get a difficulty setting. I don't like easy. I don't like the sound of nightmare. So, we'll play medium. Ah... Uh. I'm tired of traveling, or fighting superstition and its many manifestations. Even though it was me who chose to debunk folklore and mysticism, little did I know I'd end up being labeled as Patrick Galloway, the man with endless occult knowledge. Before I knew it, people all over the world paid me to investigate all kinds of weird things. <laughs> as long as they paid me, I'd look into it. Funny thing though, the more I saw, the more I believe there are forces beyond our control. Creatures not explainable in any human terms. Things that make me skin crawl. I fled from Ireland and hung around Paris and London with no real purpose till the Great War started. I joined a special unit whose job it was to squelch the fears of the superstitious farm boys who made up the fighting ranks. The Trasanti were the biggest pains. New commanding officer, Jeremiah Covenant, led our unit in the hunt for their camp. We were ambushed. They came streaming out of the woods, waving swords and howling like banshees. I saw their leader holding a strange stone over his head, yelling weird words in a strange tongue. 
And just when I was gonna pull the trigger, he glared right at me. A bright green flash came from his hand, and it bowled me over as my gun went off. I woke up in a hospital bed with severe burns. They told me Jeremiah and the unit had gone on without me, but he'd given me the shaman stone to keep. I hadn't given any of this much thought until I came back here to find this letter that Jeremiah wrote me almost six months ago, asking me to come back to Ireland and help him out. This is not something I'm dying to do, for it may mean the death of me. He saved my life though, so I owe it to him. Just hope it's not too late. Okay, everyone. Let's go over a bunch of stuff that we have in front of us right here first. On the lower left-hand corner, you see the current weapon we have equipped, both in my hand and as a symbol in the far left lower corner. When a weapon has ammunition, you will see the amount of ammunition loaded into the chamber, as well as your leftover ammunition displayed. In the center left area of the map, of the map of the screen, you see the number 100 and our and a plus symbol. That is our life. If that ever reaches zero, we die. In the center right area of the map, you see this weird looking triangle thing, along with another number 100. That is our mana. As we use abilities, it will decrease, and it will increase, as you can see, slowly over time. In the lower right hand corner of the map, you can see the spell I currently have equipped. That is displayed as the purple eye in this case, not that orange circle with the guy speaking in it. That's something else which I'll in a second. The circle eye is the spell we have equipped. That weird yellow dot you see above it is the rank of the spell. I believe spells can go up to rank 6, maybe 7? I'm not sure. Max. It might even go higher than that, but I can't really remember. As spells increase rank, generally they either do more damage, they have, they last longer, or they cost less mana to cast. Finally, I should explain this, and then we'll get to well, more things, so I guess this is... Finally, when this stone is equipped, look at the spell in the lower right-hand corner. Note that it has another green dot. The stone artificially increases the rank of whatever spell you have equipped currently, or selected, by one, so this spell is rank two, not rank one, as long as the spell is equipped. Also, this, I'm oh sorry, the stone. This stone also makes this particular spell, scry, free to cast. See? No mana, as long as we have this active. Okay, let's see what, uh, actually let's let this fade, and then I'll explain what that orange symbol is. The orange circle with the mouse is an indication that we have a new entry in our journal. Let's bring it up right now. So, this represents my thoughts. As we pick up guns or other spells, their symbols will show up down there, hinting that there's some lore to read. Now, as I warned you, I like reading the lore, so we're going to go ahead and read all this lore right here. So let's go ahead and start. Each time my past fades from memory, fate has a terrible habit of reawakening me. Most often, the unpleasant name of Otto Kessinger is the vehicle of remembrance, but not today. My old friend and commanding officer in the Great War, Jeremiah Covenant, has sent word. It has been years since I have heard from him. His letter came whilst I was away, sitting unopened for nearly six months. My joy at reading his name was quickly replaced by sorrow, then by fear. Jeremiah has fallen ill and requires my assistance at his estate in Ireland. I have not set foot on Irish soil since poor Gwendolyn's death, and I did not think anything could make me return. Could I have been responsible for her death? Being legally exiled from my homeland was painful, but nothing in comparison to my memories. How did she end up on the floor? How could so much blood come without a sound? How was that knife in my hand, and why was Kessinger suddenly nowhere to be found? But Jeremiah saved my life, and I cannot deny any request he would make. The necessity of my presence is somewhat vague, as his letter at times was incoherent. He speaks of his sickness as a family illness no medicine can cure. Regardless, I will go to my friend. I have booked passage on a steam liner leaving tomorrow, arriving in four days' time. I hope I am not recognized by the authorities. I hope I am not too late. The Gelzebar Stone I have carried this artifact ever since the day Jeremiah gave it to me following the battle with the Trisante. 
it seems to throw out a shock wave of considerable force, and ever since I acquired the stone, I have noticed strange sightings and visual anomalies. However, the power of the stone has a dark side. On occasion, a beast from beyond this world has attacked me. My only explanation for its appearance is that I was using the stone's power for too long. I had not seen the beast for a while, of course, but I have not needed the stone. My revolver? My trusty revolver. A six-shot weapon of forged metal grace, durable yet lightweight. My military piece has seen many a country and spilled much blood over the years. And scry. A spell that allows me to see and hear past events from the geographic location which I happen to be standing. It also casts an ethereal light on enemies and darker areas, giving me the ability to see my foes as well as find my way. I must be careful in its use, as it has no offensive power, and it seems to drain my energies for short durations. Learned men have stated that they believe that man has yet to unlock the full potential of the mind. While traveling to the Orient after the war, I met up with a local seer who told me that I was one of the chosen few, only a handful of individuals that he had ever met that had this ability. He called it scrying, to be able to read portions of the past. Most of the people who possess this power, he said, over the course of their lives, eventually fell into disability, mind tired from the barrage of images and sounds that could be heard from both the past and the present, the real and unreal. I know I have the ability to scry, because of the subtle words I hear calling within me at times, begging me to look deeper into the past, deeper at what actually isn't even in front of me. But I am truly wondering if this is the gift I dreamed of, or a sick curse placed on me by an outside force. Okay, one. Let's do a few more things, and then we're finally going to start. The music and ambient sounds can be increased. And I'm actually going to up the brightness just one rank. I think that's good. Sorry, everyone. You're Jeremiah's old war buddy, right? Indeed. Jeremiah's. Sorry it took me so long to get here. His letter said it was most urgent. Jeremiah is beginning to think that the letter never arrived in your hands. He's been quite anxious to see you. We've all been quite worried. Jeremiah's now bedridden. Follow me and I'll show you to his living quarters. 
apologize for the look of the house, but there's only a skeleton crew of servants now. Jeremiah let go of everyone else, and the house is much too large for us to clean. Because we've lost electricity to most parts of the house, we can only maintain the living quarters. This family's had so much tragedy. I hope you can help him. Stock. Stock. Patrick, you made it. At your service, Jeremiah. Sorry for the delay, but I've been abroad. What happened to you? It seems I've come under the watchful eye of the Reaper, my friend. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Apparently too long. Patrick, I came back from the war only to find my entire estate in disarray. My brother Aaron disappeared first, and then my sister Bethany. My declining health is a result of an old war wound, and unfortunately, the symptoms are irreversible. I didn't summon you here to watch me die. I need your help. Anything I can do. Just name it. Strange events began happening around the manor. After thinning out my staff, they ransacked my estate, taking whatever they could carry. The rest of the help was quick to follow, as they feared rumors of my family's curse. I can't help but think it's more than a coincidence that strange happenings have increased since I've been back from the war. I want to get to the bottom of this, but I'm just too weak to investigate it myself. I'm relying on you to step in for me. Of course, Jeremiah. The only reason I risk coming back here is to assist you however I can. My thanks to you, Patrick. What the hell is that? Sounds like it came from downstairs. I'll check it out. Lock the door behind me. I have arrived in time. Apparently just in time. Completely bedridden, Jeremiah is a shadow of his old self, appearing many pounds and a few shades lighter. His explanation for calling to me is still unclear. He speaks of strange happenings around the estate. The problem is that he is unable to rectify in his weakened state, and has requested that I investigate. I of course agreed. Before I could ponder where to begin my exploration, the servant who showed me to Jeremiah's room screamed from downstairs. Did... Okay. Often where to begin is the most difficult step. She has a really deep, scary sounding scream. Jammed. Stuck. All doors that you cannot open will have that sound, and Patrick will exclaim, Stuck won't budge. 
or jammed. Describe what you can only see? As the bonds of flesh are broken, the world becomes apparent. Jammed. Health packs. Health packs restore, I believe, 35 or 40 health points. Those beasts were after me! What in God's name were those things? They're called Howlers. And while I've never seen one before tonight, I've heard of them for years. Those weren't natural, my friend. We're fighting more than superstitions here. Perhaps I was being naive not to tell you, but they're 
might be something more sinister at work here. When I was a boy, I encountered something I can't quite explain. You see, there was this aisle of standing stones that sits just off the estate. Someone had carved a sigil into each of the stones, something indiscernible. Father had many books on the occult, one of which contained a sketch of that very symbol. I took my brothers and sisters out to the island and read from my father's book. Well, what happened? Something answered. The ocean began to boil, and a great wind whipped against us as we stood in the circle, and my siblings huddled to the ground in fear. Eventually, the wind died, and the sea settled. Patrick, I know it sounds like the ravings of a dying man, but I believe those standing stones had something to do with this. What has once been a taint upon this family has now begun to manifest itself. But you told me you're dying. Doesn't this curse end with you? Who knows? My brothers and sisters are dead, but I don't think they're really gone. I've heard some servants whispering. They think they've seen Lisbeth on the estate. My family has come for me. I sense them, Patrick. By now, you and I know the supernatural exists. You saw the Howlers. And what about our encounters with the Tersante during the war? You still even carry the Gelzebar stone with you. It's a token of the shaman's life I took. That's all. I found a scroll with a picture of the Gelzebar on it. I believe it contains the way to awaken the stone's dormant power. Very well. Let me study this scroll overnight, and I'll see what I can do in the morning. This house still hides many secrets. I'm counting on you to reveal them and put an end to this mess. The next day in your guest room. I'm going to check out the recording. I'll be right back and we'll pick back up. Okay, it looks good. Let's read the lore and then it's time to explore some of this house. The scroll Jeremiah gave me has revealed a powerful spell. It seems that with proper concentration and the focus of my mana, I am able to release ethereal bolts of ectoplasm from my hand. Unreliable at range, these mystical damage the mystical damage seems quite effective in close quarters. A piece to the puzzle. The scream downstairs was a result of an attack by a beast, something Jeremiah calls a howler. Similar to a dog, the animal was pale in complexion and had claws as long as my arm. It could leap several meters from a dead stop. I killed the fiend, but before I could thoroughly inspect the corpse, it vanished without a trace. Upon questioning Jeremiah, I am a little more unnerved than I was after seeing the Howler. He told a story involving his brothers and sisters, an Isle of Standing Stones, and a sorcery book of his late father's. Apparently the Covenant children, led by Jeremiah, went to the island and read from this strange book. He maintained that it was simply a prank to scare his kin. He believed something from within the Ring of Stones answered back, raging the sea, angering the wind, and shaking the earth. Since that time, Jeremiah has been visited by terrible misfortune. All of his brothers and sisters have passed away. I recall one late night in a foxhole, Jeremiah showed me a picture of the youngest sister, Lisbeth. No more than a teenager, she was so striking I found it hard to concentrate on his descriptions of the others. Anyway, Jeremiah is not completely convinced they are indeed dead. Well, to be precise, he's not sure they have remained dead. I suspect that these are delusions brought on by his memory of that day at the Stones. Otherwise, I can only imagine this as a terrible prank played upon a dying man. But if they are only delusions, why not inform me of them when we first spoke? Why would he not write me of such in his letter? Perhaps he did not think I would come. The pink item we picked up is an amplifier stone. This strange crystalline stone seems to be a source of finite power that may be used to increase the power and effectiveness of my spell casting. I must keep my eyes peeled and ears open for its pinkish hue and low hum. We can use them in order to increase some of our spells like scry 
or now ectoplasm. Let's show you what ectoplasm does, by the way. It sends out basically beams of energy. With each rank, I think it does slightly more damage and also flies straighter so that we are able to aim it a little better. I think at rank 4 or higher, may, might be 5 or higher, it can also go through doors and walls and what have you. We're going to spend our amplifier stone to be picked up on this spell. I think overall there's like 50 or more amplifier stones, but some of them are really well hidden. We'll be lucky to find all of them. I don't think that will happen. Now as you can see, the spell is rank 2. The spell will, it will fly a bit straighter, and even flick straighter still with our stone equipped. Finally, we have Joseph's note here. I have just returned from the Standing Stones. Whatever inspired an ancient people to build these stones out on that windswept isle, I cannot guess. While I have seen sites like this before, something about the stones has... While I have seen sites like this before, something about the stones has renovated within me. Why would ancient people trouble themselves to build these monoliths on such an isolated island? It would have been far easier to establish a similar ritual area on the mainland itself. I find it curious that for as long as my family has owned this house, no one has taken it upon themselves to truly research the land which we own. Considering I had not returned to the manor since I was a child, I never realized the curious nature of my inheritance. Why does this area have such a strange collection of archaeological artifacts? While I strongly doubt there is any connection between Neolithic stones, the decaying monastery, and the tower that the estate was built around and wraps itself around. The significance of the three major archaeological sites cannot be denied. The tower is a local legend itself. Supposedly during a great storm, the tower just appeared on the site. Of course, no one can tell me when this happened. All I can tell is that it is a gutted shell of what it once was. No doubt this is why it has been sealed off for so long. The monastery is now a crumbled ruin. It certainly is just a remnant of some reclusive order of monks. It seems that Ireland is dotted with these retreats. I will have to travel out to the island someday. Perhaps I will take the children. Joseph. Have you noticed anything strange going on? Apparently, Elizabeth's room was broken into last night during the commotion. Where's her room? Just down the hall from here. It's quite a mess. The butler said someone broke into Elizabeth's room. Perhaps I should investigate. Stuck. Tell me what you know about Lisbeth. Why, she was a fetching young lass. Quite the fiery temper, though. She could be placid and calm one minute, and then suddenly she's spitting curses and swinging her nails at you like an animal. Tis a pity her mother died birthing her. Indeed. 
Following her mother's death, I'd raised Lisbeth like my own. In the end, the waste in sickness got her. I'd cared for her when she was sick and watched her wither away to nothing. Pity a young woman has to die in the spring of her life. Ah, now she rests with her poor mother at the family mausoleum. The groundskeeper claims to have seen her recently. <laughs> oh man, seeing a ghost is never a good omen. Where can I find this groundskeeper? He's out in the gardens. You can get there through the kitchen. Your knowledge is appreciated. Thank you. On nights when I cannot sleep, I look from my bed to the monastery out my window. The reflections of the waters that separate us ripple across my bedroom walls, filling the room with waves of moonlight. If it is quiet enough and the wind is still, I can hear them chanting. Their prayers roll across the water and fall upon my ears like a lullaby, rocking me to sleep. It fills my body with such quiet peace. And yet I cannot help but wonder how something that provides so much security could at the same time haunt me. At midnight the chanting stops. The brilliant lights of the monastery go black except for a tiny glow that emanates from the entrance to the catacombs. As I watch that single light, I can see the shadows of the monks at the entrance. It is then that I feel a slow creeping dread rise from my stomach as if the island somehow has a hold of me. I have overheard bits and pieces of a story from hushed conversations about monks who died a horrible death years ago among the ground. It is said that their tortured souls were put to rest within the catacombs, and that their two brothers have stood guard at the entrance each night since. I cannot help but wonder why. What are they waiting for, or hoping to ward off? Are they bound to the island with the same unknown force as I? The Lord works in such mysterious ways, but how can a just God allow his own flock to die within sacred grounds? Surely there is another force working among us, one capable of pure evil. A loving God could never allow such pain and agony. Is it that force that eats at me at night and leaves my dreams unsettled? Are the waters enough to keep me safe? I wish just once I could lie in the grass outside the catacombs for a night and put these haunted dreams to rest. I must end these nightly visions and seek the truth. Lisbeth. about Elizabeth, the sibling's mother, Evelyn, apparently died while giving birth to her, and the housekeeper filled the void of her material absence. She said Elizabeth was a very beautiful girl with a short, violent fuse who passed away from a wasting disease. I take note of the irony of someone who was so beautiful dying of such a heinous disease that calls for the destruction of their vanity. The maid said that the groundskeeper believes to have seen Elizabeth alive. Having seen Lisbeth with my own eyes, I can only believe this maid's frightful testimony. I'll go down to the kitchen and try to find my way out to the gardens anyway. Need a key.
dearest mother, all is not well here at the Covenant estate. Joseph, my husband, who once charmed me with his good will and smile, now seems distant and reclusive. I realize that when we met there are those imperfections one must look past, and that your heart helps you to forgive. However, Joseph's strange obsession keeps him in the library at all hours of the night. Seldom are we spending time together, and even more rarely does he want to exercise his husbandly right towards me. I am beginning to feel inadequate, especially when he talks of his desire for children prancing round the estate. What am I to do? I bide most of my time alone in the greenhouse, reminiscing of my sweet youth and the rich and gallant Peter Rokana, who would wait patiently on me and shower me with expensive gifts like my beloved pearl necklace. Things could have been different had I kept that social path. Instead I feel like I'm the fool for getting involved with Joseph Covenant. His prime moments are being spent in his library with books twice as old as me. Apparently my, vis my visage can't garner his attention. What dear advice could you give me, dearest mother? I'll be waiting for your response. I hope that this letter finds you and father well. Tell father not to worry about his little robin, that I've left the nest but shall never leave his heart. With love, Evelyn.